Day number eight of the 12 days of MLB rankings is here, and we've got a very, very deep one here with the right field position. Best player from every team at right field. This position's loaded, especially at the top. Middle, eh, not so much, but the top, the top five, the top 10 is crazy. So I'm sure you guys are gonna let me know in the comment section where I messed up. Feel free to do so. I love to read those comments. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the rankings coming at you. Remember Christmas Day, we wrap this up with the top 50 players in Major League Baseball. So let's drop a like on the video. It does help support the channel. There's so much work that goes into this so enough talking about the work let's actually show it and get going into these rankings getting us started in right field at number 31 is going to be hunter goodman of the colorado rockies goodman's actually put up some crazy power numbers in the minor leagues and right now he is the projected right fielder for the rockies according to fan graphs but last year in 23 games at the major league level we didn't see him do too much one homer four doubles three triples and 17 rbis hitting 200 with a 247 average 386 on base 632 slugging for an ops plus at 60 goodman's still very young he's a rookie we haven't really seen him play much and he's shown plus power before, so it'll be interesting to see how he plays next season. For the 30th best right fielder in Major League Baseball, go into the White Sox to talk about Oscar Colas. Colas, a Cuban international player that came over from the MPB with a lot of hype, finally got the call up last season, and at times looked good, but for most of it, didn't look great. Five homers, nine doubles, 19 RBIs, hitting 216 with a 257 on base, 314 slugging for a 571 OPS, and an OPS plus of 55. Colas was just not particularly great on the offensive side or defensive side, Gonna have to step it up next season. Next up at number 29, I've got Dominic Canzone of the Seattle Mariners. Canzone, of course, traded to the Mariners midseason last year. And while the Ohio State native doesn't really strike out much, doesn't really do much of the hitting either. In his rookie season, 59 games, six homers, 13 doubles, 21 RBIs, hitting 220 with a 258 on base, 399 slugging with a 657 OPS for an OPS plus of 81. Projected right fielder right now. I don't know how long that will last or how much he'll actually play, but Canzone, as of right now, is their right fielder coming in towards the bottom. For the 28th, best right fielder in Major League Baseball, Brooklyn, New York native Josh Palacios. Palacios actually got a decent bit of playing time last year with the Pirates and did okay. 10 homers, 9 doubles, 40 RBIs with a 239 average, 279 on base, 413 slugging, and a 692 OPS for an OPS plus of 86. He can play all the outfield positions fairly well. He's a good depth piece, but if he's playing every single day for you, I don't think you're feeling too confident with Josh Palacios out there. Back in the rankings this year at number 27, I've got Seth Brown of the Oakland A's. Seth Brown's actually like a pretty decent hitter we've seen him be plus at times but last year really didn't look too solid the power kind of just drained out of him 14 homers 19 doubles 52 rbis not going to be enough for a guy with a 222 average 286 on base 405 slugging and a 692 ops ops plus below 100 doesn't play particularly good defense out in the outfield and in a lineup that isn't really strong it's hard to put seth brown there where you just don't really have to pitch to him just missing out on the top 25 at number 26 i've got razor ramon loriano of the cleveland guardians yeah feels weird to to see him out in Cleveland, but he's going to be there pretty much every single day. 105 games last year, 9 homers, 18 doubles, 35 RBI, stealing 12 bases. Of course, he still has a cannon of an arm in the outfield. Pretty good defensively out there, but we now haven't seen him play over 110 games since the 2019 season, and it kind of shows with the slash line going down again to 224 average, 304 on base, 371 slugging, and a 676 OPS for an OPS plus at 91. In the top 25 started at number 25, I've got Mickey Moniak of the Los Angeles Angels. Despite having a great season since statistically he doesn't project well and he was cold towards the second half of his season in 85 games he came out crazy hot with 14 homers 21 doubles 45 rbis hitting 280 with a 307 on base 495 slugging and 802 ops for an ops plus at 113 it's just not sustainable he had a walk rate of 2.8 percent and a k rate of 35 percent for a guy who doesn't particularly hit the ball super hard it's going to be hard for mickey moniak to really replicate what he did last year because he was great in that sample size but i think we got to take his step back here and see what Mickey Moniak is, which is not one of the best hitting right fielders in baseball, which is what OPS Plus would tell you. He's above league average at 113. For the 24th best right fielder in Major League Baseball, missed a lot of time last year. That's going to be Starling Marte of the New York Mets. Yeah, Marte's dropping down quite a bit from the number seven spot. He looked really bad last year, and granted, he was coming off of double groin surgery in the offseason, and he never once looked healthy last year. 86 games, five homers, seven doubles, 28 RBIs. Weirdly, though, with 24 stolen bases, hitting 248 with a 301 on base, 324 slugging, and a 625 OPS for an OPS plus at 73. I'm not giving up hope on Marte, but until I see him play healthy, he's just not one of the best right fielders in the game. Kills him on both the offensive and defensive side. Coming in at number 23, I've got Wheelier Abreu of the Boston Red Sox. Baseball reference tells me it's Wheelier. That feels crazy. I would think it's Wheelier. 
but I'm just going to call him Abreu from now on. Abreu was money last year in an extremely small sample, still kept his rookie status. 28 games, 85 plate appearances, two homers, six doubles, 14 RBIs, hitting 316 with a 388 on base, 474 slugging, and an 862 OPS for an OPS plus at 132. Looks to be a good athlete as well. Played the outfield decently well. Hard to really understand exactly what we saw from Abreu, but the projections say he'll be pretty decent just outside the top 20. Hunter Renfro now on the Kansas City Royals is coming in at number 22 for me on my right fielder rankings. Even in what was a down year for Renfro, still put up 20 homers, 30 doubles, and 60 RBIs, hitting 233 with a 297 on base, 416 slugging for a 713 OPS. OPS plus at 91. Defensively, wasn't particularly great. Again, does have a cannon of an arm, but we are coming off of two seasons in a row where he was plus offensively, so I'm giving him a little bit of a benefit of the doubt. I'm liking what the Royals are cooking out in Kansas City. They're putting together a major league squad over there. Could compete for the division title. Will Renfro help? We'll have to see. And then just missing on the top 20 at number 21, former first round pick back in 2021, Sal Freelick of the Milwaukee Brewers. Freelick started off the year well, but eventually cooled off a bit. Some of my concerns with his game, like the lack of power, started to show and did hurt his slash line, but he doesn't strike out much. He does get on base and he does play a good defensive outfield. In 57 games, three homers, nine doubles, and a triple with 24 RBIs, stealing seven bases, hitting 246 with the 341 on base, 351 slugging for a 692 OPS and an OPS plus at 91. Like I said, he walked almost 13% of the time, so there's definitely the guts of a good right fielder. Just need to see him play a little more consistently over the season before I can bump him into the top 20. Just inside the top 20, at number 20, Will Benson of the Cincinnati Reds. Benson had a breakout season, and honestly, playing in Cincinnati is a match made in heaven for him. He is not a hard contact guy, so these home runs that he's hitting, while they're not maybe the cheapest of shots, they're not home runs in many parks. In 108 games, 11 homers, 15 doubles, 8 triples with 31 RBI, stealing 19 bases, hitting 275 with a 365 on base, 498 slugging for an 863 OPS and an OPS plus a 130. Again, the projections don't love him, which is why I bumped him down a little bit. He is a soft contact king, but if he plays like that again next year, it's going to be hard to keep him out of that top 15, top 10 range. Next player coming in at number 19 is going to be Jesus Sanchez of the Miami Marlins. Jesus Sanchez, still young, only 26 years old right now, and he did have maybe the best season of his career thus far, played in 125 games, a career high, 14 homers, 23 doubles, 52 RBIs, hitting 253 with a 327 on base, 450 slugging, and a 7 77 OPS for an OPS plus at 108. He actually walked a career high 10% almost, struck out a career low at 26.6%. There are definitely improvements that have been made to Jesus Sanchez's game. I'm interested to see what his development looks like in the upcoming season because he did some things really well, including hitting the ball hard. For the 18th best right fielder, Mike Yastrzemski of the San Francisco Giants. Yastrzemski, of course, is always going to play a solid defensive outfield and at the plate, while his numbers are not as good as that breakout in 2020, he still put up decent enough numbers that made him a plus offensive player. 15 homers 23 doubles in 106 games, hitting 233 with a 330 on base, 444 slugging, and a 775 OPS for an OPS plus at 113. Yastrzemski's a really solid player to have. You don't want him to necessarily be your everyday right fielder There's better, but he for sure does not make your team any worse. He's solid. Being a little aggressive here, at number 17, I've got Jordan Walker, right fielder of the St. Louis Cardinals. Now defensively, atrocious in the outfield. Doesn't really know how to play the position. He's going to probably end up being a first baseman, but wow, at the plate, Jordan Walker is just a ton of fun. Hits the ball almost as hard as anybody in baseball in 117 games, 16 homers, 19 doubles, 51 RBIs, hitting 276 with a 342 on base, 445 slugging, and a 787 OPS for an OPS plus at 114. As a 21 year old rookie, a 22% K rate with an 8% walk rate is a great start. Again, hits the ball just so incredibly hard, and overall had a great rookie season, just really bad in the outfield defensively. Right at the halfway point here at number 16, I've got Jason Hayward of the Los Angeles Dodgers. We'll probably end up being in a platoon role like he was last year, but even so, the numbers have been really good. He was great last year for the Dodgers. He's like a two-win player. 124 games, 377 plate appearances, 15 homers, 23 doubles, 40 RBIs, hitting 269 with a 340 on base, 473 slugging, and an 813 OPS for an OPS plus at 117. The defense has gone down a little bit for him in the outfield, but obviously he still has that pedigree, and the Dodgers just sprinkle a little bit of that magic on him, and he started hitting for power again. Looked really good at times. Getting the top 15 started at number 15, I've got Nick Castellanos of the Philadelphia Philadelphia Phillies. Philly fans, spare me. I don't care that he didn't make an error last year in right field. If you played high school baseball, you shouldn't make an error in the outfield. Gotta be the easiest position to limit that. Still sticks with the glove out there. Like, his range is horrendous. Like, he had a negative 6 OAA. His arm was negative 4. I mean, it was horrible. But at the plate, he had a really solid year. 29 homers, 37 doubles, 106 RBIs. That's great. Awesome from a counting standpoint. 272 average, 311 on base, 476 slugging for a 788 OPS and an OPS plus at 112, which feels a little bit low, but Phillies of Bambach still. I think Castellanos
Castellanos is better than the average right fielder, has the power potential, has been so good in the past before. I'll give him one more shot before I jump him down. 15's fair. Free agent Teoscar Hernandez up next at the number 14 spot. Absolute butcher in right field. Horrendous out there. He's a DH, but maybe he plays a little right. He did last year for the Mariners. Offensively, while it wasn't one of his stronger seasons, did still hit 26 homers, 29 doubles, 93 RBIs, 258 average, 305 on base, 435 slugging for a 741 OPS for an OPS plus a 106. But again, it's concerning because it's now the third straight season. We've seen him go down and down and down in the OPS and the OPS plus and the power numbers. Something to keep an eye out for here as Teoscar is going into his 31 year old season. Big jump up in today's video at number 13. I've got Lane Thomas of the Washington Nationals. Want to give Lane some props. He had a really good season, was snubbed from the all-star team. 156 games, 28 homers, 36 doubles, 86 RBIs with 20 stolen bases, hitting 268 with a 315 on base, 468 slugging, and a 783 OPS for an OPS plus at 114. Coming off of a solid season the year prior, like he's finally getting playing time and he's making the most of it. He's in his prime at the 28-year-old season, and he does have a cannon of an arm in the outfield. So I'm going to give Lane Thomas an aggressive rating here, but put him at number 13. Do it again. He's going to be top 10. Just a smidge ahead of him at number 12, I've got Riley Green of the Detroit Tigers. I really love Riley Green as a player. Towards the end of the year, he really started to figure it out, and we saw him raise that slash lineup to a 288 average, 349 on base, 447 slugging, and a 796 OPS for an OPS plus at 117. 11 homers, 19 doubles, 37 RBIs. That power started to come alive. He can play center field, so you know he's going to be all right and right. Big fan of Riley Green. Dude's a stud, and he's only 23. Tigers are building something. Them in the Royals. Keep an eye out. And then just missing on the top 10 at number 11, I've got George Springer of the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm not going to crush him for one bad season, because in previous years, he's been great. But I can't put him in top 10 anymore going into his 34-year-old season. 154 games, like, was weirdly healthy. 21 homers, 25 doubles, 72 RBIs with 20 stolen bases, hitting 258 with a 327 on base, 405 slugging, and a 732 OPS for an OPS plus at 102. He just was a little bit worse than he's been in the past, and as a guy who's getting older, something to keep an eye out for, especially defensively. George Springer, not the same guy he once was, but still borderline top 10 right fielder. Getting the top 10 started at number 10, Minnesota Twins right fielder Max Kepler. Wow, Kepler was like one of the hottest hitters in baseball in the second half, and he needed it, because the prior two years had been underwhelming. Really hadn't looked good since 2019, but he was great with the glove last year, 86 percentile in OAA in right field, 24 homers, 22 doubles, 66 RBIs, hitting 260 with a 332 on base, 484 slugging, 816 OPS for an OPS plus at 121. Something's clicking for Max Kepler. Keep an eye out for him next year, a sneaky guy who could really put up some numbers in that Twins lineup, especially in a contract year. Coming in at number nine in right field, I've got Anthony Santander of the Baltimore Orioles. Santander, underrated hitter, second straight season in a row with an OPS plus above 120, 28 homers, 41 doubles, 95 RBIs, hitting 257 with a 325 on base, 472 slugging, and a 797 OPS for an OPS plus at 121. Yeah, defensively, not great. Who cares? The dude absolutely mashes at the plate. Switch hitter as well. Takes full advantage of the ballpark when he can. He's just really, really good. Very underrated. For sure, top 10. If he could play a little defense, it'd be even higher. One of my favorite players in the National League right now, at number 8, Seiya Suzuki. I love Seiya Suzuki. He really started to figure it out last year. We saw him have a great rookie season in 2022 and was even better last year. 20 homers, 31 doubles, 6 triples, and 74 RBIs. Hitting 285 with a 357 on base, 485 slugging, and an 842 OPS for an OPS plus at 124. Seiya gets on base, doesn't strike out too much, has pop and power in that bat, and really got hot in the second half where he had a 938 OPS, over 300 average. Once he started getting consistent playing time and was fully healthy, Seiya was a beast. He was even plus in the outfield. Love Seiya Suzuki. He's also got a hose. Aggressive ranking, but I stand by it. At number seven in right field, Josh Lowe of the Tampa Bay Rays. After a very disappointing rookie season last year, he was awesome in 2023. 20 homers, 33 doubles, 83 RBIs with 32 stolen bases, hitting 290 with a 335 on base, 500 slugging, and 835 OPS for an OPS plus at 129. Josh Lowe, that sweet left-handed swing, was a former first-round pick. We're starting to see the athleticism and power play into his game. And while he still does need a little improvement defensively, he's a good athlete, so I expect that to come at some point. Brother of Nathaniel, also getting a higher ranking than him at number seven. Just missing on the top five at number six. I hate to do this, but it's Adolis Garcia. Adolis is so good. He's a beast. 39 homers, 29 doubles, 107 RBIs, even so nine bases, 245 average, 328 on base, 508 slugging, 836 OPS, by far the best season of his career, won a gold glove, so you know he's a beast in the outfield, has a cannon, made the all-star team, got MVP votes, World Series champion, hit some of the biggest home runs of the entire postseason, ALCS MVP, Adolis is 
just a friggin' stud. I love this dude. Pimps home runs, plays with passion. I just couldn't fit him inside the top five because it's a loaded position. You'll see why. Coming in ever so slightly ahead of Adolis Garcia at number five, Corbin Carroll. Rookie of the year, all-star help lead the Diamondbacks to the World Series. You gotta put Corbin Carroll inside the top five. He got MVP votes top five last year as a 22 year old. 155 games, 25 homers, 30 doubles, 10 triples, 76 RBIs with 54 stolen bases. God! 285 average, 362 on base, 506 slugging for an 868 OPS for an OPS plus at 134. He struck out under 20% of the time, walked nearly 9%. I know he doesn't have the strongest of arms, but OAA, 85th percentile, and he's just so fast. Oh, Corbin Carroll's a beast. Top five for sure. Welcome back, Fernando. At number four, Fernando Tatis Jr. Tatis, low-key, was awesome defensively in the outfield last year. The athleticism played, he obviously has a cannon of an arm. And while his season was a tale of two halves, horrible in the second half, great in the first, still just got too much faith in this guy. He's awesome. 141 games, 25 homers, 33 doubles, 78 RBIs with 29 stolen bases, hitting 257 with a 322 on base, 449 slugging, 770 OPS for an OPS plus at 113. I'm really not gonna punish him too hard. New position in a just weird clubhouse and team dynamic last year with the Padres. Super, super, like, just underwhelming. I think he's going to bounce back just fine and have an MVP caliber season. This is a buy low right now if you're in any Dynasty Baseball Leagues. If someone's trying to move Tatis, you should be grabbing him. For the third best right fielder in Major League Baseball, honestly, the most underrated player in the league, in my opinion, that's going to be Kyle Tucker. I mean, Kyle Tucker is just so good. So incredibly good. Another season of an OPS plus above 130. 157 games, 29 homers, 37 doubles, 5 triples, and 112 RBIs. Oh yeah, he also stole 30 bases. Did you know that? 284 average, 369 on base, 517 slugging for an 886 OPS and an OPS plus at 142. All-star, top five in MVP voting, silver slugger. Seriously, is there anything that Kyle Tucker can't do? Well, maybe play defense. The glove wasn't great last year, but I don't care. At the plate, he's disgusting. He's only 26, gonna be 27. Kyle Tucker, dog, so good. And then just outside the number one spot at number two, I've got Juan Soto now of the New York Yankees. Oh God, it's the first time I think I've really said it in a video because I never gave you that trade video with him. Oh, Juan Soto is going to be so good for them. He's going to be amazing with the Yankees. He's amazing with everyone. He's one of the best players in baseball. In what was a down year with the Padres, 35 homers, 32 doubles, 109 RBIs, even stole a career high 12 bases. He walked a major league best 132 times for the third straight season in a row. He led major league baseball 275 average 410 on base 519 slugging for a 930 ops and ops plus at 158 again in a down season made the all-star team won a silver slugger sixth in mvp voting on a team that missed the playoffs i can't believe the yankees got him for absolutely free juan soto is one of the best players in the league but not the best right fielder in baseball because of course coming in at number one is going to be ronald acuna jr of the atlanta braves arguably the best player in the league not named shohei otani acuna just put up a silly video game like season last year hitting 41 homers, 35 doubles, 4 triples, and 106 RBIs, but here's where it gets crazy. He stole 73 bases. The 40-70 club. Like, what are we even talking about? Safe to say his knee feels great. He hit 337 with a 416 on base, which led Major League Baseball. 596 slugging, 1012 OPS for an OPS plus at 168. Won the MVP, All-Star Game, Silver Slugger. He walked almost as much as he struck out. An 11.4% strikeout rate with a 10.9% walk rate. What are we even talking about? Literally couldn't care less about him in the outfield. He's got a hose. Don't care if he doesn't even catch balls. When you hit 40 homers, steal 70 bags, 1,000 OPS, you're one of the best players in the league, and that's Ronald Acuna coming in at number one. There they are, my right field rankings for the 2024 season. I'd love to know what you guys are thinking about them down in the comment section below. Where do you agree? Where do you disagree? What are you thinking? Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. It really does help support all the work we do over here, as well as subscribe, so you don't miss out on any of the rankings coming at you over the next few days. Follow me on all my social media. Giraffe Neck Mark link is in the description, and that's where I'll wrap it up. You guys know the drill from here on out. YouTube recommends you watch this video. This is my most recent upload, so click through those if you have not yet seen them. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you all tomorrow for the DH rankings.